Welcome to part 9 of the AX7 setup. Uh, in this section we are going to um, set up the standard posting profiles for uh, items of our purchase and for sales. Um, it will be basically just the standard posting rules, so not yet with uh, intercompany postings and also not yet um, with purposes and so on. It's really just the standard posting rules in the end. Good, perfect. So this means nothing else. We in the last section, we've created the item groups. I just quickly go back and open them in inventory under the item groups. So um, as you can remember, we created two for finished goods, one for raw material and one for semi-finished products. All of them are stocked items and of course uh, the stocked items then will need to be uh, created for the posting profiles. Good. So first of all, we need to create, of course, the different main accounts. So I just go to general ledger, to chart of account and to accounts and to main accounts. And <clears throat> basically for each of the item groups, it's quite normal that for each of the item groups, one stock account is created. So this means nothing else than stock raw materials is a balance sheet account and of course the whole stock is going over the stock subledger and therefore really important always tick this flag here for the stock accounts go to create a new one for stock semi finished products i say balance sheet account and as well do not allow manual entry a new one one two zero twenty or let's say for the finished goods, it's 100. So um, stock, finished goods, uh, coffee, capsules, of course, as well, a balance sheet account and <clears throat> do not allow manual entry to 11010. This is too long. Yep. Stock, finished goods, of the machines and balance sheet account and save and okay what else do we need we need to have of course um, the accrual accounts of our goods delivered not invoiced and goods received not invoiced so i'm quickly going to create them 13001 goods delivered not not invoiced <clears throat> balance sheet account since it is also going over the stock subledger also all these auto automated accounts should be um, not allowed um, not allowed to post directly manually over it because they should always go over the stock subledger I create the account goods received not invoiced also a balance sheet account I save it good what else we need to have of course the cox account so i just say um 40 40 100 let's say yeah okay so cox finished goods um coffee caps capsules of course um i just say i just say uh that just finished goods can be sold, um, raw materials and semi-finished products. In this case, it's not possible to post. Of course, we would be able also to set it up in the way that also raw material would be able to um, be sold. But um, anyhow, so also the Cox account, since it is also going over the stock subledger, also do not allow manual entry. The second Cox is the 41110 Cox for finished goods, coffee the machines a profit and loss account i save it um, the next would be the sales accounts so i say 30 100 30 100 would be then of course sales finished goods coffee capsules Profit and loss. Also for the oops, also for these kind of sales accounts which are going over the sales order, also do not allow manual entry. And 31110 
Sales finished, sales finished goods, um, coffee machines, profit and loss, save and do not allow manual entry. Um, for the sales accounts, it also makes sense actually to add to add um, the logic that you always need to have a VAT code, so a sales VAT code. So I quickly go and add here the company, click here on sales tax, and then I'm going over validation list. So multiple or valid, I say add, and I'm just going to add all the sales account, uh, all the sales sales tax codes. Well, the first one was not sales, so I quickly remove it. Yes, good. The next one, so sales export, sales goods, European Union. Uh, European reduced, sales goods zero, sales goods zero, sales service EU, and the last one would be sales services. Perfect, and I do exactly the same for the other sales account. And so also I click add and this press on Germany and add and sales tax. And I add here again exactly the same the same sales tax codes. Good, perfect. Um, as you see, uh, you, it looks like a lot of work to add those, but it's really worth it because um, then you can be sure that um, just the correct sales tax is posted on those. Good, okay, so what else do we need to have? Uh, in AX, you also need to have um, a return action account. So a return action account is nothing else than if you would send back um, from a purchase order a material to another or to, as a, to a lower or to a higher cost price than you bought it. Um, in this case, the amount would stay on the return action account. So this means I just create a new one and I say 40, uh, zero, let's say zero, 10, no, zero, 4103. I say return action, return action for finished goods, coffee capsules. I say it's a profit and loss account and do not allow manual entry as well. I need to have one as well for the 113 for the return action. Finished goods, coffee machines. Do not allow manual entry. And of course, those accounts, so the return action accounts, I also need them to have it for the uh, raw materials and semi-finished goods because you purchase them of course as well and it's also possible to send back raw materials so you need to have this account as well for the raw material and semi-finished products so i say 40 zero, zero 03 and i say here return action raw raw material materials I say profit and loss and I say do not allow manual entry basically it's also possible to just create one return action account would also be an option um, I just did it in a way that it is split by item group good and last one return action uh, semi finished goods it's profit and loss and I do not allow manual entry as well uh, did I miss something else? No, I think those should be all accounts which we need for the moment. Perfect. So, means nothing else. Oh, by the way, um, of course, never add in the Cox account the kind. Uh, don't don't add in the Cox account uh, the VAT validation because AX is never going to post onto the Cox the VAT. The VAT itself would end up actually on the return action account. So, if you want to add uh, validation for the purchase then you need to add this validation here onto the return action accounts so 
I just added for one, so I just added for the for the coffee capsules for the return action account. Let's say here, this company, and in here I'm going to add, of course, this time since it is from purchase, I'm going to add it that just the purchase vet codes are valid. Zero purchase import service. Voila. Okay. For the coffee capsules. Perfect. Good. I say okay. And that's already fine. For the other Cox accounts, of course, uh, return action accounts, of course, you can also um, add it there. Important, you will see it later on. AX is always going to post on the return action account, but if the cost price, so if it is not a back or it's a return delivery, then it is always just a zero game, so just an in and out posting. Good. So this means we can now start with the setup. Means actually nothing else than the setup is under inventory management, setup, posting, and then posting. Good. So let's start. Let's start with. So you end up now actually in here. I actually like it to add it to set up the posting rule under this screen. So under inventory management, set up posting, posting, because you really see all the things in here. Uh, let's start with the purchase order, I would say. So uh, this means actually nothing else than we can just go here through these kind of things. Not all of them are necessary, but yeah, we will see. Good. So this means nothing else. We can now start actually to add the posting rules. So this means nothing else. Um, we are going to post directly onto stock. So I'm also going to set up uh, the the posting rule that uh, it is based on cost of sales, based on the cost of sales method. So basically, the cocks are released at the time of the sales of the products. Um, in Europe, there is or there are also kind of another procedure, so the total cost procedure possible. It is also possible to set it up in AX, but the whole posting logic is then basically quite complex if you really have the integrated system with total cost procedure where also the whole stock deviation and so on will be uh, posted. But it is honestly kind of old fashioned, the total cost procedures. Therefore, therefore I just going to set up the cost of sales procedure. Good means nothing else than I just need to add here the different the different posting rules. So the cost of purchased materials received. So it's the posting which is released at the time of the product received. So on the time of product received, of course, we just want to post stock against the accrual goods received, not invoice. Means nothing else since we have several item groups. We just need to set it set up to say which um, item group is which. Uh, stock account so i say the first one the finished goods for coffee capsules is the stock account one to 100 i add a second one for the coffee machines i say in here the coffee machines is this one and i do exactly the same for the raw materials where I say it's 1200 and the last group of semi finished goods. Semi finished goods is then this one. Good. Perfect. So um, the, the goods received, not invoice, is then the second one. So in here, I can actually quite simple say all items. So I said here, I said. For each item group, I said it is going to a different main account. Here, I'm saying, well, I just have one main account from the item, so I'd say just all, and I want to post it onto the 3001 goods received, not invoiced. Um, we are going to have a look at these kind of possibilities that you have also with the account code for the for the vendor respective customer um, but we are going to do it later on for the moment we just leave it here at all so here we do it anyways be always at all and here we just have the groups good so the cost of no um, one thing the purchase accrual here so you have here um, a third one the purchase accrual is basically 
four, five, four, five for logic not needed because it is just for um, standard costing. Uh, if you want to, if you want to distinguish between uh, purchase price variance and invoice price variance, then the purchase accrual account is quite important. For FIFO, um, we need to add actually here as well the goods received, not invoiced account, because AX is just going to post uh, if there is a, if it is in a separate currency, AX is going to use this account as well, which means. We just have one goods received, not invoiced account. Therefore, you can just add in both of these two kind of things, the same one. Good. The cost of purchased material invoiced. Um, yep. Okay. So um, this is also the, the, name, the name changed. The name changed a bit between an AX 2012 and AX7. Um, this one is this one is the stock account. Again, actually, so it is the stock account which on which it will be posted at the time of the invoice. So exactly the same one as before. So we add the item group. We say here as well the coffee capsules is twelve one hundred. I guess. Yep. Then I say again group finished goods coffee machines twelve one hundred ten. I say group for the raw material. This is twelve one. 12 yep okay and the last one the semi finished goods it's 12 0 10 good the purchase expense feature for product is the return action account so you will have on this account on this account you will just have a balance if there is a return delivery which has a different cost price compared to the purchase where you purchased in the end. This means nothing else than since we've created here as well different return action accounts for those accounts. We can just say okay return action accounts for the coffee capsules. The next group will be the finished goods machines. The finished goods machines is then 411113. I say the raw material the raw material was i guess this account yep and the semi-finished products was this account good i don't add an all as i did this one <laughs> ah, i need to add here at first an account and now i'm able to delete it i guess yep good Perfect. So we already set up the posting profiles for the purchase order. For the moment, we don't need to have any other setting. Later on, we will have a look also at the purchase expenditure for expense when we are going to sell, uh, when we are going to purchase non-stocked products. But for the moment, um, just those those um, different kind of posting rules are sufficient. So this one, this one, this one, this one, and the purchase accrual. Good. Let's move on to the sales order. So on the sales order side, we have a little bit less to add, just a little bit less. So we just need to add here cost of units delivered. It's the same thing as on the purchase side, but just the other way around. So it's the stock account for goods, which is delivered, but not yet invoiced. So this means I just say here group then as well. I'm just going to add in here the main account. So I say stock finished goods and i say in here now okay perfect now you are actually uh, so okay so you're actually able to add also in here directly kind of a logic so this means nothing else than if i'm just adding here the finished goods but if I don't add a posting rule for raw materials and semi-finished products, means nothing else, then it won't even be possible to sell to sell um, raw material or semi-finished goods. Of course, in most of the cases, uh, it happens that you also sell semi-finished goods as a spare part, for example. In this case, you would just need to add here the posting rules as well. In this mandate or in this company, I'm just going to set it up in a way that just finished goods are possible to sell in the end. Good. Cost of goods sold or delivered means nothing else than this one is the 
goods delivered not invoiced account so the 13001 on sales side you don't have a sales accrual account so you can just leave it as it is good cost of units invoiced again the stock account of course and i'm also going to add here just the stock accounts for the finished goods good costs of goods sold um costs of goods sold invoiced are the cox actually this means nothing else than i just say well okay the costs or the cox are going for the coffee capsules to the 4100 cox finished goods coffee capsules and for the machines it will be the 411 oops 110 i guess yep absolutely right good so as i said we are still not going to add here kind of an account split of course if you as soon as you have kind of intercompany postings we you need to to change here also the account relation that it posts onto an intercompany cox code the same then for the revenue but we're not going to have a look at it yet it will this will be also then a part of the of another of a later section good the revenue here group as well finished goods coffee cut capsules and here it will be the 3100 and for the second group so the coffee machines it will be the 3110 good this is it for the moment we don't need commission we don't need discount maybe just to say if you add here a posting rules for discount then ax is automatically going to post with a gross method so it posts the whole amount onto the revenue account and would then reduce it onto the discount um, account if you don't add a posting rule here then ax is just posting the net amount so this means nothing else than directly on these two revenue accounts you will have just the net amount available good um this is it for the setup for purchase and sales for the standard um for the standard ones for the standard items means in the end nothing else then we can actually already start to post um almost we just need to make some small settings so let's go at first to accounts payables and then setup and accounts payables parameters and of course we want to post the physical posting so post product received in ledger should be activated otherwise you otherwise you just won't have uh, any posting at the time of the product received um in here this is this is available this is fine this is fine that's that's actually perfect the invoice validation i guess is a three-way matching it's also fine and in here is also good okay let's go to accounts receivable to the setup to the accounts receivable parameters and in here oh yeah first of all the order type should be directly a sales order otherwise you would create a journal um, which means journal itself is not possible to process in the end so because it needs to be approved at first until it gets a sales order and here as well in updates not in updates i have to yeah in updates on the packing slip post packing slip in ledger activate this as well i just quickly go back to the accounts payable parameters because i'm quite sure that there is also the type journal ah, sorry it is not it's under procurement and sourcing procurement and sourcing setup procurement and sourcing parameters and yeah in here also change the purchase type to purchase order as a default purchase type good so um what does it mean it means actually that at the moment we should be able already to post our first purchase order we have in the account structure at the moment we have it set it up that all cost accounts need to have a cost center of course a cost center doesn't make sense for the whole purchase stuff um, but for the moment we just add 
there a cost center and in a later section we are going to change the account structure that for the whole purchase and for especially for the whole sales um, that there not a cost center needs to be added but um, a purpose but for the moment we just can go in here and create our first purchase order so i click on new and i choose the vendor account and i say well I choose my second vendor because this one is Swiss. No, it's not Swiss. I thought it is Swiss, but it's not. Doesn't matter. So I just add here the vendor. I click on OK. And as you can see, the language needs to be filled out. This is in here. If you realize that there is something missing, always go on to the vendor as well and add the language. Not that you end up in the same with the same error all the time. So I just add here the language as well, and I'm quite sure I ah, is in Switzerland, and I'm quite sure that the others also don't have language. That's correct, and I add here the language as well. Good. So the Swiss company. This is fine. I click on back, and now I'm back here. That's good. I click on OK. And I already have my first purchase order where I can add my item. In the, in the earlier section, we created our first item. So in the last section, so this means that's fine. We already have one item available, which means nothing else than I'm going to choose here this item. It is a finished goods, but we are just going to purchase directly a finished goods and sell the finished goods also at the same time. Perfect. Um, let's just quickly go on to the item back because I just want to add um, something in here. Let's see. Okay, that's also, that's also new that I end up in such a form. Quickly close it and right click is here. Also not working. I uh, actually maybe here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Um, um, now now on the product I go to released products. Mm, okay, I go the long way. So uh, I go to product management product information management, I go to products, I go to released products. And I go back to the edit mode. I go to options, I change the view to detail view. Good, okay. So, um, the prices, we didn't add any prices. It's also quite, it's okay not to add not to add prices but uh, you have the option actually to say that you always want to update the prices based on the la latest purchase respectively the latest cost price so i just quickly do it so for the moment as you can see here the purchase price is zero i just say 10 for the moment and on the managed cost you have exactly the same possibility for the latest cost price so this means i leave it here as well the price here is at the moment zero good so let's go back to our purchase order and i go to the edit mode and i think i so good i quickly remove this line again and i just quickly add this line again and now as you can see here he added automatically the unit price of course he converted the 10 euros which i've added to 10.50 swiss francs because this vendor is a swiss vendor and it is then in swiss francs of course good so this means nothing else for the moment i do have to add here a financial dimension so i need to have a cost center otherwise we cannot post it of course, we in a later section we are going to take this out. But good. So I've created here. I've created here my first purchase order line where I'm just going to buy one coffee for ten fifty, and 
basically what I need to do is at first I have to confirm this purchase order. With the confirmation of the purchase order, uh, you can of course also print out the purchase order confirmation, which would have been just here. So you would have been able just to confirm it here and then print it out. Of course, or if you already confirmed it, you can reprint it under the journals and then you would be able just to print it actually out. Now it's loading. And here would be the purchase order confirmation. Good. So, um, that's the purchase order itself. Good. Okay. So we move on and just quickly have a look here at product. So yeah, we have it in, we have the storage dimensions. That's fine. We also have the VAT, which is also available. Perfect. So as you can see, everything is automatically inherited from the item respectively from the vendor. So for example, sales tax group is coming from the vendor and is automatically retrieved to the purchase order. And the item sales tax group is automatically inherited from the item. And therefore you have all this information already available, which means AX already knows without any interaction, what kind of sales tax he needs to take. So in this case, since we are going to buy it from Switzerland, it needs to be an import. Perfect. So this means we are, can, we can now go and post the product receipt. Of course, there are several ways of how to do it. You can also do it over um, over the warehouse management and over a scanner where you just scan in then the serial number or whatever. Will be also something that we may have a look at it in a way later section. Good. So I post the product receipt and I just click on OK, which means the product receipt is now posted. We won't have yet a look at the whole postings. I just quickly show it in later section. We will go um, into more details regarding the postings, but for the moment, we just expect that AX posted it onto stock. So on the debit on stock of the finished goods coffee capsules, and he should have posted the accrual onto the goods received, not invoiced. So this means if I click here on vouchers, then we see that he actually did exactly this posting. So stock finished goods, 10 euros and goods received, not invoiced as well, 10 euros. This here is the amount in transaction currency, so Swiss francs and euros. Of course, the stock account is just always in your accounting currency and never in a foreign currency. Good. So this means nothing else than we received it. We can now post the invoice, means I can go to invoice, I can say generate invoice. Good. The posting date, I also posted today, the number, just the invoice number, and I can quickly check the totals, and the totals should be 1050, that's fine, without any sales tax, that's good, and then I can go and post it, Is yeah, I can go and post it, invoice matching validation, okay. Where is the update quantity gone? Whoops, I didn't want to do that, sorry. Back. Match product received. Where is? Um, where is the update quantity? Update quantity. Update quantity should be delivery note. <laughs> Um, so delivery note, it should be product received. One second. Ah, oh, product received quantity, here it is. Okay, product received quantity, that's fine. Why? Okay, now we posted it, okay. I guess in the beginning it was all of the vendor in the product from complete for invoice. The vendor invoice posting process is complete for vendor, so we posted it. <clears throat> confirmed invoice yeah perfect um i was i'm not sure actually if the the update quantity was in the beginning purchase uh, product received or it was all and then such an error with the <coughs> with the matching can appear actually but uh, anyhow we'll see it on the next purchase invoice which we've created but as you can see here 
the status is now invoiced. He posted the invoice. So this means if I go here to invoice, journals, invoice, I should see my invoice over 1050 and we can have a look at the voucher. So in AX, it is always the case that the first step that AX is doing is to release the physical posting. So we will see it right now. So the first thing that AX did is nothing else than he just rever reversed the physical posting, which is this one here, actually. So it just posted 10 out of stock again and the goods received not invoiced. He just released it. So he just reverted the, the whole physical posting. Good. The second posting is then, or second and th or third posting is, as you can see here, the return action account. Because it is not a return delivery, it's just an in and out game. So we, you can just forget about this account. It is always zero as long as it is not a return delivery and the cost price is not different. Good. This means the actual posting that he did is in the end, of course, 10 onto stock and 10 euros onto the vendor respectively. Of course, on the vendor rest of world, we will see the 10 Swiss francs 50. So means nothing else. Let's quickly, uh, let's quickly have a look at the vendor, at the vendor account. Uh, this is kind of annoying that uh, that is not really possible to, that is at least at the moment <laughs> not possible to switch directly to the to the related tables. But anyhow, um, this means in here in the transactions, I see now that we have here the 10 Swiss francs 50. And of course, always if you are somewhere on a transaction over original document, you can actually go back to the um, origin of it. So for example, if I want to see the purchase order, then I can click here on view details and I'm ending up on the purchase order. And if I want to see the invoice, then I can just always go through the system this way. Good. So we purchased one means nothing else than, of course, at the moment we have it on stock um, at the cost price of, of 10 euros. So this means nothing else than as well. Maybe I click, need to click here and now I end up on. Yep. OK. Means nothing else than the price itself is 10 here as before. Plus he updated also the cost price. So date of the price plus the price is now updated based on the last purchase. Good. So of course we also have this, this, this quantity now on stock for the moment in this section, we won't have a closer look at the, at the stock itself. We just want to purchase and buy this item. Um, per, purchase and buy, <laughs> purchase and sell this item. So we purchase it already. Now we are going to move on to sell it. So of course, accounts receivable and then under orders and all sales orders, we can go and say, well, I create a new sales order <clears throat> and I'm going to sell it to my fit customer. So it is a domestic customer. That's fine. And I click on OK. And the X is now creating the sales order. Good. So I choose here then as well the item. Of course, I can just sell one of them because I just purchased one. I can say, well, how much is it or how? high is the price and now AX seems to have so unit now it seems to have kind of problems regarding the illustration of it so I just quickly close and reopen it I had it actually um, also sometimes that it is it looked like this then normally if you just close um, the browser and reopen it then you um, then it will be fine again so I just quickly do it yep okay now it seems good again so this means I can as you as you can see there are quite a lot of information which are unnecessary just personalize the form in a way that you don't see all these all these stuff so for example um, I want to hide this I want to 
also I also want to hide the CW quantity. So just remove or just move all the things that you don't need to have. So for example, the unit price, um, you want to shift it to the left, again to the left. And the net amount, of course, as well. I want to move it to the left, I want to move it to the left, again to the left, again to the left, and good. So uh, we purchase it for 10, we are going to sell it for 150, so quite a good margin in the end. Here again, for the moment, at the moment we need to add a cost center because, because of the account structure, uh, it needs to have a cost center, but this won't be long the case. Good, so um, we created the sales order and of course we can print out the sales order confirmation. Uh, sell of course and in here we can print or post the sales order confirmation when I find it is, am I blind? Confirm delivery date, calculate, blah, 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 credit, no, confirm, confirm sales order. Why is it not possible to just quickly save it? Now, okay, so I just need to click Ctrl and S and now I can confirm the sales order, which means nothing else and I can just print out um, a sales order confirmation. And AX will print it, will print it now or would have printed it if I would have say that he should print it here in the parameters. Yep, so post that's fine and I also want to print it. So I can say yes and yes. And now he's going to create the report. So just the sales, so the sales order confirmation. Good, so this means nothing else. Let's go back and now we can go over pick and pack and we can directly post the packing slip. So we are going to deliver the whole stuff. Means nothing else. Then we need to, since we are not going over the picking, we are just going to deliver it directly. We just need to say here, the quantity should be all that we have here. Also this line in here. Good. So this means we can actually post it and post it, which means nothing else than we have also the first time in here on sales side, a general ledger posting. The general ledger posting, of course, the same as on purchase side, but the other way around. So he just accrues, uh, he just make an active accrual onto the goods delivered on the invoice against the stock accounts. So if I click here on voucher, then you see we have here the stock of 10 um, in credit and on debit side, we have the goods delivered, not invoiced. Of course, since it is the costs, it is going for the 10, which is the current average stock value uh, and not the sales amount, of course, which is 150. Good. Uh, last step would be then that we just go and go to the invoice, generate invoice, and we are going to post the invoice update quantity, the packing slip, this is fine. I click on OK and on OK again. And AX is now going to post the invoice. I'm not sure if I, as I said, then I've said he should not print it. Of course, if you want to print it, you can always go here to the invoice, to the journal. And in here you can then say, um, yeah, invoice, document, view, copy. Yeah, okay. So under invoice, document, view, and then you can print a copy or an original. So I just say I want to have an original invoice again, which means nothing else than AX is going to print it. Okay, perfect. So let's have also a quick look here at the postings. So first of all, let's go to the voucher. So first of all, what we, I just quickly sorted A to set. 
Good. Okay. So the first posting here as well is the reversal of the physical posting. So he just did exactly the same posting as on the delivery note, but just the other way around so that the goods delivered, not invoiced is offset and the stock account is then as well again, zero. The second posting is then the Cox posting. So he took out the real stock amount, so the real cost amount, and posted it onto the Cox, of course. And the last posting then is, of course, the customer posting, so where you just post the customer against sales, plus in this case, we also have VAT. So it just posted 150 onto sales. So the amount that we've added onto the line was, of course, the net amount. He posted the VAT of 19% because it is uh, domestic customers and it is a full rate for the item. And he posted then, of course, the 178.50 euros onto the customers. So this means actually nothing else than we did the setup for a standard for the standard postings and it worked actually quite good so we didn't have any kind of error which is perfect let's have also a quick look at trial balance how this looks like now so inquiries and trial balance and in the parameters i say i want to have it that's fine good so we have actually this one should be zero is zero we have here, this one, which should also be zero, and it is zero, and the whole return action account should also be zero. And we have, in the end, sales of 150, that's fine, Cox of 10, that's also perfect. So, as you can see, it's actually, honestly, it is working. As for that, that this version is a technical preview up to now, everything is working extremely good, really extremely good. So, um, especially if I compare it to the first versions of AX 2012 that I've tested, um, it is uh, way better um, this time, really way better. This means the, they're really, Microsoft really did a great job regarding this. Good. So um, this was it with this section. So as I said, in this section we had just the standard item posting rules. In the next section we will move on with adding kind of the financial dimension purpose and intercompany and also the intercompany posting rules. So as you can see, it's getting more and more interesting of the of the setups. So um, the next time we will going to adjust the account structure, make it a little bit more, a little bit more um, advanced, and also the intercompany postings. Good, perfect. I hope you enjoyed this session and looking forward for part. 10.